Okay, what I have here is basically a uh, brush that I made. Um, it's pretty much a kind of a line brush. And all I'm doing is I'm adding a brighter color, which is going to give me the illusion of the uh, texture pattern of jeans. And all it is is kind of like uh, four or five lines in, in one row. And... Uh, and that's all I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting that texture on over uh, very lightly. And now I have a uh, kind of a diagonal brush, very similar to the other one. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, texture uh, the denim uh, leather, whatever you want, to the overcoat there. And I'm I'm using it as just a uh, kind of a light light brush. You don't want to use very uh, very much opacity on this this blending, and um, you don't want to shadow or texture the shadow areas because it, in the shadow it start, it'll disappear. Um, here I've just kind of created a, uh, uh, I've got a rock face brush and the, the brush is pretty much just uh, literally a photograph of the rocks. And all I'm doing is I'm just painting some real quick highlights in with this brush. Um, nothing real fancy, just kind of on the edges of this rock to give it a little bit more depth. And then what I'm going to do is take the same brush and create a multiply layer where I and I'm doing it on a new layer so I can control the opacity and I'm doing a multiply layer where I'm just basically going through and um, just adding this the shadow to some of the rock face so you get a little bit more noise if you will in the brush itself and this is where I'm changing the opacity. I've actually turned off that layer right now. And I'm going in and, and uh, I decided I didn't like the dark, dark brown, so I'm, I'm using more of a uh, lighter uh, brown and a multiply layer. Okay, I found a stock footage of uh, this crackled ground, um, and what I'm doing is I'm transforming it into the perspective, and I'm just kind of positioning it in place, and then I'm going to put it in, I think it's uh, overlay or soft light mode, and then I created a mask with uh, very simple... Um, and I'm just masking out the people and that's going to give me just enough texture for the ground. I don't want to have too much texture and then I'm going to change the opacity on it.
as you can see me trying to erase this stuff, um, what's happening is the masking takes up a lot more processing power, especially with uh, overlay layers and stuff like that. Uh, so this file's already getting pretty big. I think it's somewhere near um, 200 megabytes, and I'm using it like uh, nearly a, uh, a gig of my RAM uh, in cache. In this area here, I thought that the uh, the dress was kind of getting confusing with the amount of uh, um, stuff going on. There was just too much between her coat, the dress, and other things. So I made the dress bigger to give it a little bit more um, variation from the uh, rest of the uh, piece. Right here I'm going in and I'm defining the boot a little bit more. Um, the other one has shading and I, I've kind of forgotten about this one because I was more worried about the hand. But now that I've got the hand in there, I'm going to go in and, and start adding in more of the boot shape and such. As you can see, I'm starting to paint that frost that I was talking about in my prior video um, that needs to go on the ground. And what I'm doing here is just doing a light overlay uh, or light pass on the, uh, the texture. I don't need it too strong, um, but it's it needs to be prevalent. All right, um, this is the point where I'm going to start working on the uh, spirit that's entering the um, the character. And what I'm going to do here is, is uh, create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to start um, just kind of paint some base colors down, you know, just kind of get this idea. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm kind of designing it as a serpent and so what I'm going to do because it's a spirit I want to make it transparent so this is something that you can't really do um, when you're when you're painting unless you water it down and, and paint in several layers um, and I have this uh, I have this scale brush that I'm using um, and it's it's pretty simple it's just a just a real basic uh, pattern that's put into scales and I over, uh, overlay this and then I start to erase um, the figure to make it transparent.
this is where I've taken the new layer and uh, started working on uh, just a little bit different hue uh, of a blue to just kind of accent the edges. Um, I'm changing the uh, layer style in order to create a just a, a better looking uh, blend between the two. Here's where I have a, the best way to explain it would be a sparkle brush. Um, it's just a, a brush with some scatter on it and uh, just some dots basically. And as you uh, move around it, it basically creates um, what would be equivalent to snowflakes. I'm just looking through my brush library right now. I'm trying to find something a little bit different. And uh, what I've done is I've taken uh, one of the default brushes in Photoshop and I've applied a lot of spacing, a lot of scattering to it. And that's going to give me these like almost little snowflakes. Uh, I've created a new layer. I kind of want some waves to go in. So what I'm doing is I just create a new layer and all I'm doing is transforming that layer to be more like a wisp of smoke and then I'm going to copy it a couple times and, and play around with the uh, layer effects on it to get more of a interesting blend on there and I'm just going to place it into the, the uh, scene. At this point, I'm using one of the natural brushes um, in Photoshop just to get kind of the uh, strands of hair. Uh, with this, the natural brush is, is nice because it just kind of layers it in there. So I'm just picking picking this and kind of uh, stroking it in, in short strokes where there would be highlights and darks. All right, now I'm working on his hair, and if you notice, I grabbed some red, um, and I'm using the red to kind of contrast the blue and, and add a little bit more warmth to his skin. And you can see where I've 
gone outside the lines and I'm, I'm cleaning this up. You don't want the hairline straight and flat. You want it uh, kind of blended into the scalp because basically you're going to have hair in, in layers as you go back. And I picked this uh, saturated stock image of, of hair, and I'm just using color choices directly from that. And even though I have a, a cooler light, um, I'm using almost nearly white uh, to kind of bring out the highlights into the hair. And I don't do this often, but occasionally you want to use the through the dodge or burn tools. And the dodge or burn tools are really nice to just kind of add this additional color uh, without actually changing the brush strokes that you have previously. Here's uh, where I've kind of added it. Um, the Just beware the dodge and burn tools will change the colors drastically. Again, I've used the dodge and burn tool on her, on her face um, to kind of accent the highlights and uh, get that, that brightness in there. Notice how it turns uh, the pink almost uh, bleached out. Don't forget when you're doing this that the uh, characters also have individual eyelashes. It depends on your resolution, um, how far back you're going and stuff like that. But don't ever kind of paint them in there straight like this before you have the hair. Um, especially with, with characters, unless they're you know very well manicured and stuff like that, you're always going to have some of the uh, hair strands visible. Okay, at this point in time, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a, a brush for whiskers, and I'm just creating a couple, spreading them out, and defining the brush preset. And then I'm going to go back into uh, change with scattering here, and change this preset, scattering, put on some uh, uh, directional angle, um, change my spacing around, and um, play with that. And then as you can see, I've got a nice brush to, to draw in. You know, the five o'clock shadow. When you're doing these types of brushes, you always want to do them on a new layer because what happens if you don't do them on a new layer is it could destroy the uh, underlying paint underneath and you might not have enough undoes.